The Radiant Republic. One. You and I at this juncture are not poets, but founders of a city. I am an architect and a planner of cities, and I shall remain so. I shall tell you how this will work out. I hope that you follow me. Let us in our argument construct a city from the beginning. An old city must be replaced by a new one. We must build the places where mankind can be reborn. This inquiry is of great importance. There are images, rough plans, sketches beginning to take shape in my mind. A new world, a high-speed world. In such a city, we should most certainly find justice. These sketches could provide the proof. So long as this city is governed wisely on the lines we've laid down, it will be the largest of all, a city of light that will dispel the miasmas of anxiety now darkening our lives. The building of a whole new world. Who will give the order? Authority. Where is it? He lives on the earth. When he walks, he walks with his feet on the ground. Two, the cities of the world are living in an anguish of uncertainty. There is no freedom for men in this present age, only slavery. The world is sick. A readjustment has become necessary. And now we are, we think, constructing the happy city, not in a partial way by making happy a few people in it, but by making the whole city happy. It will be technical and rigorously precise. The plan has been drawn up by serene and lucid minds. It has taken account of nothing but human truths. Once our city is well started, it goes on growing as a circle round itself. The intersections shown here are all perfect. I have put the roads up in the air five meters above ground level. Most of the city's streets will now be inside the buildings. No further need for the housewife to trudge out shopping in the rain, then trudge back again with all that heavy shopping. Adequate refrigeration will assure storage without waste. Each city unit will possess a swimming pool more than 100 meters in length. Then there are the tennis courts, the running tracks, the soccer fields. Does not communion in pleasure and pain bind the city together? The whole city will share in a man's joy or his sorrow. Home or city, it is all the same thing, a gift to us all from our modern technology. It is the product of mathematics and machines. Where in it shall we find justice and injustice? We must use the results of modern technical triumphs to set man free. Authority must now step in. Patriarchal authority, the authority of a father concerned for his children. Now do you understand? The task before us is to satisfy men's hearts. We shall discuss it more satisfactorily later, if you please. A high value must be placed on truth. 3. A great adventure is beginning. The city has shot out in all directions. The lesson of history is an order to advance. It is time we found out what we are really living for. I discovered truths that seemed to me, in all humility, fundamental. The city may go on increasing so long as it can grow without losing its unity, but no further. New techniques make social reorganization essential. If the wife goes back to her home, to her children, the result would be less industrial unemployment. You must consider if by giving each part its proper color, we make the whole beautiful, and a man will be most likely to love that whose interests he thinks are bound up with his own. What is our system of education to be? For each pair of apartment units, there will be a kindergarten run by qualified nurses and supervised by doctors. Security, selection, scientific child rearing. We must remove any inferior child. Do you not understand that we begin by telling stories to children? Our first duty, then, is to set a watch over the makers of stories. How are they to be prevented from behaving savagely towards one another and the other citizens? The man who has reached the shore quickly forgets the raft that bore him through the raging waves. Gentlemen, like hunters, we must stand round the cover and watch carefully, lest by any chance justice escape us and vanish into obscurity. We must bring our men, while still young, into the midst of terrors, and then again plunge them into pleasures, testing them more hardly than gold is tested in the fire. A new age is making its presence felt. A solitary man living in his solitary house is nothing. He does not exist. Men in a city are legion. They shall live in common, taking their meals at the public tables as in an army. Are not these the best of all the citizens? Do they not conform to the character of the soul. He that is master of himself will surely also be slave of himself. 
Is not this what you call courage? Four, the world is not coming to an end. The world is coming back to life. Do you think that we should always try to avoid the possibilities of danger? City planning is, once more, an adjunct to the science of war. Does not the business of war seem a matter of craftsmanship? And is not efficiency in war more important than anything else? Both sexes will go to war together and will take with them such of the children as are strong enough. The coming war will be a chemical war, a bacteriological war. Death will come from the skies. Every creature fights more bravely in the presence of its offspring. The population of the city has risen to five million. How many of those five million are simply a dead weight on the city, an obstacle, a black clot of misery, of failure, of human garbage? The daily activities of modern man, a life of ugly stupidity. Such a man is useless to himself and to the state. Morality is as fragile as a bubble. Is it not obvious that the older men must rule and the younger be ruled? Good men show themselves in youth to be simple-minded and easily deceived by the wicked. A noble youth and a well-bred dog are very much alike. They are the products of our age. Nothing that is good is harmful, is it? We shall say that a man is just in the manner in which a city is just. Do you not agree? Am I not right? Five. Your city is now established. The next step is to search within it, getting light for your purpose whence you may. Can you see with anything but your eyes? Or hear with anything but your ears? The ground is difficult and overgrown, a seaport now filled with sand. The whole scene is like a glimpse of purgatory. Are there no young men any more? The city has been torn apart and scattered in meaningless fragments across the countryside. Many things fall out quite contrary to expectation. Did you think that anyone, God or man, would deliberately make himself in any way worse than he was before? We have no historians of the bad days. We must go where the wind of the argument carries us. We have to look ahead at what must be built. The land is waiting for you.